Hey, what is up guys? Rakshat here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to manipulate a photo from this to this. Okay, so let's get started. Open your image in Photoshop. Okay, so the first step is to create a new path. Okay, uh, I just created a new path and then I'm going to go to uh, pen tool and then start making selection. Okay, so I'm gonna start making the perfect or at least uh, a rough selection. You don't have to make a very perfect selection because you'll be tweaking it in the end. But make it a point to make it a point to uh, you know uh, take the pen tool at least one one pixel inside the image okay okay um let's you know just in case you made a, a an incorrect selection you just want to click control z uh, clicking one more control z will not it'll just bring it'll redo once again so what you need to do if you want to take two steps back is you need to use control z control alt z twice so that would you know bring back how many ever times you want to do okay let me let me just resume So once you've made a selection, even though it's not perfect, it's okay. The next step is to click on control and a single click on path that you just created. So if I do it, it's uh, going to be con converted into a selection. The next step is to isolate the selection from the background. So for this to happen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the a mask with the selection being done so essentially the background is now transparent now to check out if our selection is perfect what I'm gonna do is create I'm gonna create a empty layer 
and inside that empty layer I'm gonna paint it with a random color let's say I'm gonna paint it with uh, a green one okay so with this being done we identify that this part this part of the clip is not perfect and you know we have to modify a little bit on the hands over here so on and so forth so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna click on magic wand tool select the region where where you know where I think should be altered uh, magic wand tool and I'm gonna select it okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to okay now I'm gonna I'm gonna take my brush tool and choose uh, perfect black and then start painting and make sure the opacity and flow of the brush is set to 100 so now that I painted I'm gonna deselect it and bring down the size of the brush to bring down the size of the brush you have to use the left bracket so this will bring down the size of the brush I'm gonna select that part where it's not completely gone I'm gonna if you can look at properly you can see that it's not properly done here so I'm gonna take this off and the best part of creating a mask is whatever the the stuff that you deleted can be recovered so I'm gonna recover this by alternating the color I'm going to put a white color here and then and then start to get back the original stuff I'm painting it back so make sure you don't paint too much because again bringing too much stuff is also not good this part here it was not recommended so I'm gonna bring down the size of the brush totally and and take care about the rest of the region here like so Good. okay it's optional for you if you want to uh, you know if you want you could possibly select the edge make the proper selection of the mask and then go to select refine edge and then slightly increase the edge radius of the edge and then shift the edge plus positive around let's say plus 5 plus 2 that would be good enough to do the trick and in even increase the smoothness a little bit and feather it up hit ok so this will smoothen the edge I guess it's okay pretty much okay that's fine so let's bring in the backdrop here let's bring in the backdrop here and this part is not required so I'm gonna take it off okay here if you see it's not proper so I'm gonna bring back the lost details to bring the to bring back the lost details oopsie what I did oops what did I just do I painted blue I mean I painted green here which was not the way I have to paint black on the mask I'm gonna paint black on mask and then I'm trying to recover the details that are lost here so obviously I'm gonna reverse the color and increase the size of the brush the size of the brush can be increased by selecting the right bracket and try to get back the last details okay and here this region it's actually not recommended to leave it as it is so I'm gonna take the black color in the brush and start painting okay I, I guess this is sufficient right now when we bring back the uh, backdrop we'll have to tweak the edge once again which will be doing it and also uh, taking care about the ball I, I guess it's okay uh, to slightly 
to slightly record the details make it white go to the mask and bring the flow to about 50 percent opacity to around 50 percent and start painting so that the ball kind of looks completely circular instead of you know like a like a, like an object which is something that's not looking like a ball okay I'll make it about 100 about 100 and and keep the edge somewhere over there and then start painting white yeah. okay and here as well we want to bring back some details which is lost here oh 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 oh, oh. what's going on yes actually I had not deselected the region here is as it is so I'm going to deselect and try to bring back the last details here kind of smoothen up skin tone here as well kind of like slightly smoothen the skin tone and and like I said let me just go to make opacity 50% flow 50% the basic idea here is to uh, you know to if you want to make smooth edges and you don't want to bring too much of details then I would recommend you to alter and play around with the opacity and flow values so here actually I guess 50% is fair enough for me right now right I just want to get the ball you might be noticing that the flow is also appearing I mean the road is also appearing which is not required so I guess it's a good thing to stop it right here and oopsie I want that to happen okay fine let me just bring in the backdrop and to open open the backdrop city okay now choose the backdrop select it and bring it to the other tab and drop it right there so what this does it, you just got the image and make sure you put the backdrop behind you know below the actual image that you uh, selected like so okay now I'm gonna shut this uh, uh, green layer off or rather better yet you can even delete it I deleted this layer and crop it to the screen I don't want extra elements in this uh, I don't want extra element from this image so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna crop the top image I'm gonna tra crop it from here to here okay you know as much as the background supports okay now it's time for us to again tweak the edges as you can see this part right here this part right here is kinda like not so good so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the brush tool paint it to red I mean put it to black and then start painting it's a good idea to even if you want zoom in perfectly or you know whatsoever let me just kinda like bring up the opacity about 75 percent bring up the opacity to 75 percent and paint it there okay fine <coughs> this does not perfectly look like a ball you know okay let me just again bring back the details it's all about you know perfectly making sure that it looks realistic because you know I highly recommend you to invest some time on this part because this is where everything's going to come in place and later on it's a, it's a quick task to do the color correction and manipulate the image 
Okay. Fine. Fine, I guess right now this is sufficient. Now the next step here is to make this image look more attractive. What I'm gonna do is <coughs> kinda move see. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is like I'm gonna try and figure out what I can be doing right now. So I can kinda like, you know, I can kind of like, you know, add some shadows here and here, here. Actually, this is inspired by Fleur. I, 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 I look into his tutorials most of the times. And thanks to Aronis for his amazing tutorials. Okay, so here and then what we could do is add some shadows here, add some shadows to hands here. And 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 add a light source la source of light from here, so that it looks realistic. Here and then, what we could do. What we could do is you know. Get some shadows here. And then when 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 we start building up the image, we'll even get more ideas. Yes, actually. We want to create an illusion. Yeah, you know, an illusion which defines that this guy has placed the ball so intensely that the floor is all cracked up here. So here is what here is a crack, crack, cracked up illusion here. Isn't and then finally retouching and then intensifying this color, everything. So let's uh get to it one by one. So I'm gonna bring bring in the uh, texture here so open yes okay so this is the uh, texture don't worry I'll be li including the link for all the images you don't have to worry to find you don't have to scratch your head to find the texture okay so now I'm gonna composite this texture over here so it seems like this person has you know done a wonder <laughs> okay so bring the texture here place it over here now I'm gonna shut this layer off this is just a reference layer what we have to do is click on deselect and select the Im layer here and then hit control D to transform now when you transform click on the control button and extend it either side either side okay and here okay I'm gonna you know bring it down here okay try to match the perspective of the texture as well as the image what I'm gonna do is just approve the image orientation and then put it down here that way it kinda looks okay the next step is to uh, create more generic version look so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate it and then transform it just so that it looks you know not computer generated okay there we go okay hit okay now I'm gonna make one more copy and then put it on top and then transform it to a version which is like this like you know you get the point right I mean it should not be absolutely like a, a a common thing and it should not be a computer generated version of what you're trying to do yeah how much of a random how much of a you know how much of a uh, not identical it looks that much better it would be 
and even sometimes realistic. Okay, approve this, and now I am gonna group all the layers here and then hit Control G. So these layers look like right now they don't look anything. So let me just kind of line this guy alone. Oh man. Ungroup layers. Okay. Any alignment you need to do, you have to do it right away. Because after grouping, it's kind of difficult. You have to lock the layers and then do it. I would rather do it freely. There we go. Great. <coughs> now select all layers, group it once again. And okay. So now I'm gonna uh, change the entire group opacity. I mean the blending mode to linear light. Or okay, linear dodge or linear light. Yes, linear light seems okay. Fine. So the next step is to uh, uh, kind of match it up with what we are trying to do. Play around with the opacity and fill values. Let me just make it around eighty-five percent. Hundred percent is way too much. I'll make it eighty-five, and then create a mask. Open your brush, I mean, uh, choose your brush tool, select it perfectly black, and you know, bring the opacity and flow to around 50%, increase the size of the brush, and then start painting in the regions where you want to blend the road perfectly. So, suppose you want to blend it here, you have to paint it on those regions where you know it's ending. You have to make sure it kind of looks real right so for that to happen you're wanting to paint it in these regions okay optionally you can change the position of the subject just so it looks okay here right I mean it's all about creating realistic uh, manipulations right okay I'm gonna take the brush once again and kind of get back some lost details but on the other hand you just want to uh, blend it perfectly so I'm gonna make this go to around 30% opacity flow around 30% looks like you know it's really okay yeah here as well so paint it in the same proportion wait let me just move the reference according to our version okay so here now that we just composited this part we are yet to do the shadows and the light I guess we need to clearly blend it even more so I'm gonna do a small quick touch-ups I'll uh, do some squall, small quick touch-ups here here and there okay fine I guess when we do color correction it all it all would you know sink in place okay uh, the next step would be to to add some shadows correct so I'm gonna create a new layer and choose by brush tool bring the color to black and 50 50 I like to keep it 50 50 in most of the cases like here one there and then the hand shadow okay I'll create a hand shadow in a separate layer and this one I'll bring down the size of the brush and then just give it a touch up there 
Okay, and for the hand shadow, I'll create one more layer. I'll put it there, something like this. And bring down the opacity around 50% and fill to somewhat like so. Like around, around 65 should do the trick. Okay. Okay, that's good. But the shadow looks too much spreaded out. So, I mean, like, we just have to kind of make it seem like it's okay. And once again, choose the brush tool and move it like this. Yeah, fine. So, these two oh, account for the shadows. So, I'll group it and name it shadows. And this is the uh, main subject. This is what? This is the road. Broke. You know, <laughs> road broke. You can see it creates more dramatic, you know, look. And then this is the background. Make it BG. Okay, so next is to add some lights. Lights I'll be adding in the end. Okay. You want to increase the shadow just a little bit here. Okay, like here. Okay, great. So the next step is to match up these two colors. What I'm going to do, I am going to pull in a hue saturation layer and clip it and bring down the saturation of the subject to about 20% or 30% yeah, is okay. 30% is fine. And for the background, what I'm going to do, uh, I'll bring the hue saturation again clip to mask I will make it go to around 20% you don't find much of difference when you uh, uh, work with background because it's already less saturated it's 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 almost in the negative region background and here for our subject this looks pretty decent Okay, <coughs> so let's add some adjustment layers. So I'll 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 I'll, I'll work with uh, photo filter and make it go up to around twenty thirty percent. Uh, I guess this is pretty good. I mean, twenty five is okay. Twenty five is pretty good right 25 great okay so this photo filter is applied to the entire image and then and then add a gradient map gradient map oopsie I'm talking gradient map okay so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna choose a preset just in case if you don't get this loaded y you have to go from this icon this gear icon to noise samples maybe see go to you know try it out I I, I don't really remember maybe neutral density okay no not neutral density photographic toning yes photographic toning yes you have to go to make it from normal to photographic toning the presets and then go to sepia highlights one two whatever seems good I guess it's uh, pretty good with uh, what sepia 3 maybe a little okay and make it overlay and bring down the opacity totally to about 25 so what we're doing essentially is let me just even bring the fill to around 50 percent okay great 
So this is the difference between the gradient map before and after. This is the before, this is the after. You just want to play around with the values and the blending modes, you definitely can. Hard light looks okay, vivid light looks okay, medium light looks okay. I like it. Okay, let me just make it with, uh, let me just go ahead with overlay. Great. Now, that we made some color manipulation. Let's just apply a master color for the entire, I mean entire image. Let me just apply a master hue saturation. In this case, I don't want to do clipping mask because you don't want this clipping mask to affect only a layer just below it. You want to affect all the layers. So what I'm going to do, I'm, you know, trying to put up saturation here. Okay, great. 20, 20 seems pretty good. Impressive, huh? Okay, so 20 seems good. Okay, next is to work around with the light. And then we have to intensify the color of the ball. It looks very dull here. And the face, we want to give some more importance. So what I'm going to do, I am going to, uh, you know, <coughs> give some color to the face. Color in the sense, I want to, uh, uh, I want the face to look more brighter. And I want the focus on the audience towards the face. Focus of the audience on the face. So I'm going to get the opacity 200 flow 200 and mind you I created a new layer there I'm gonna paint everywhere on his face this looks funny right <laughs> and then go to overlay and erase those regions which you painted extra like this no. and bring down the opacity to around 50% maybe 50% let the fill be as it is see this is the before and the after this is the before this is the after we want to focus audience attention on the face because that's the index right next I'm gonna uh, give it some glamorous anger look which we want to uh, give it by eyes only I'm gonna zoom into the eye I create a new layer and then bring down the size of the brush maybe oh man brush size of the brush and start painting with white there just to the eye too much is too bad let me just bring it once again down and paint it to the eye there and paint here as well and once again apply overlay opacity down 35 fill down 50 and then erase the black part of the eye you know wherever the eyeball is visible just erase those regions I'll make it 100 this can be as rough as possible because that does not make much of difference okay if you want optionally you can try adding a black color but you want to spoil the image right okay you know as much as long as it does not spoil the image that's good something is wrong select okay You can see this is the effect of adding okay see this is the effect of adding white color and this is a very subtle effect of adding black color once again once again let me just group all those layers totally This is the before and the after. 
Okay, so I'll call this face touch up. Okay. The next step is to intensify the color of the ball, give it some dramatic look, and then, you know, pretty much that should be it. Great. So I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to create a stamp out of it. So what is this stamp? If you press Control shift alt e the layer is filled with all the layers the all the layers that are present below so essentially a stamp makes a combinative effect of all the layers that are present below and if you just alter anything here it does not get altered why because stamp is the topmost layer so you are playing with stamp that means you have to be careful and you have to be uh, having a knowledge that you cannot alter any further if you want to alter then you have to delete the stamp or do alternation and then come back to create the stamp okay the next step is to uh, give it some dodge and burn look so for that I'm going to create a new layer Fill that layer with 50% gray and choose the blending mode to overlay. So what this does, it gives you a provision and a platform to start and work with your dodge and burning process. So I'll choose the dodge tool. Now this is where the image gets really interesting or disinteresting because overdoing this will will completely ruin your image and if you do it properly this will give you a very professional look okay so let me just start working with uh, the white regions wherever there is dodge and burning required I guess dodge and burning is required here 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 so let's just go ahead here okay so start working with dodge tool and make sure you set the exposure to around 8% because too much is too bad it will spoil the image if you set the exposure way too high here I'm just trying to dodge here man here right there you know just in case you made way too much dodging then you always have control Z control alt G here there to the shoes optionally there there like so you know kind of getting it to a point where it's okay doing it there there hands I just did and this region oops we can't get the image here why because we already cut the background right oopsie that's because we just cropped it okay now now as you can see we I, I, I just took the subject from there to there and before taking it the hands were cropped so I definitely have to crop it now till here I'll just do this cropping method process once again okay fine <coughs> 
So the dodging process is over. Now yet we are yet to do with the burning process. Now here is where everything goes really interesting or crazy. Dodging is okay. Burning is really a very sensitive thing. You, if you do over burning, it will screw up the image totally. So let's do proper burning. You put the exposure to around 8 and make sure you zoom wherever you want. Okay. Let me just go smoothly. Burn the shoe if you want. Burn here, here. Once again, these clothes, shirt. You know, I'm just doing a very quick dodge and burn because I want to uh, keep the video as much small as possible. Uh, okay, hair. What not? No. This part. Okay, I was pretty much concerned about the ball being so dull. I don't want that. Let me just zoom out. Okay, and hand slightly. That's pretty good, right? Okay, great. Now, this is the before. This is the after. Once again, this is the before. This is the after. I don't... If you notice, I didn't do anything with reference to face because sometimes if you are in a hurry and you start trying to dodge and burn with your face, totally you'll burn the image and it and it's going to nowhere. <laughs> you'll completely scrub the image. So be careful while you do this dodge and burn. And if you just ordered it and you don't want to de destroy this layer, then probably you can work with the opacity levels. So I'll keep it just 100 as it is, just like that. Or make it 80%. That's even more good. So this is about the dodging and burning on the subject. Correct? Okay. Optionally, you want to burn the buildings. You burn them. But I guess it's okay for me to keep it just like that. Clouds, they're already intense. Okay. So we are almost there, but we are yet to create some lighting, like I mentioned before. We did this, 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 shadow is over. And optionally, you want to intensify the shadow? Well, you can do it. Just burn it small, lightly. That's fine. Too much is too bad, right? Okay, so we did this, 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 and we are yet to cover with lighting. So... Mm, the first step to do this lighting is you need to create a new layer. Grab your brush tool, increase the size of the brush, make sure the opacity and flow are set to 100, which is what in my case is. And then, and then, very careful that you need to paint with white. This is white, so I'll call it central. And you just slightly move it there, just so it looks very subtle. It's not really uh, interfering with the subject's view. And then, uh, I duplicate this layer by pressing Ctrl J. I'll call it spread. And then, choose the transformation tool. And extend it by pressing Alt. The idea behind pressing Alt is it that it does not extend disproportionately. It extends proportionately. So this is the spread of the light. This is the actual light itself. So let's just shut off these two layers and see for difference. 
so light sources okay but this does not really seem like what it is we want the light source to be matching the color of the subject correct i mean matching the color of the image so what i'm gonna do i am gonna grab the central layer uh, and then on top of it what i'm gonna do i am going to create a hue saturation and then clip it to the bottom of the central layer and then choose colorize uh, put the saturation all the way to the right 100 percent and bring down the lightness like you know around, uh, around let's say around 25 25 is too high right 10 percent 10 is good or even 15 more towards the color that you want so in our case we want orange tint right so i'm gonna move it towards the orange okay when we get towards orange is okay right you just have to play around you play around with the values you'll if you find it's good then you keep it okay now i'm going to do the same process for the spread as well so i'm going to create a hue saturation layer drop it and colorize it increase the uh, saturation all the way to 100 let's get it to around minus 5 put it orange tint not much of a difference right now you'll find the difference around 55 do you see it okay now this is about the light okay so this is about the light light spread and this is the actual central light so i'm gonna uh, uh you know group these layers and by the way to select multiple layers i i click on shift and control and then group into layers shortcut for grouping is control g and this is light okay so everything seems okay the next step is to give it more some intense and a detailed look right for this to happen what i'm going to do i'll create one more stamp remember shortcut to stamp is control shift alt i'm going to go to filter other high pass I'll keep the radius relatively high. The value, the larger the radius value, the larger the details in the image. So I like to keep it in a more HDR-ish kind of a way. So what I'm going to do, I'll keep it just 25 and then hit OK. And then change the blending mode to soft light. See, this is the difference. You see the difference? This is the after and this is the before. See, this is totally smooth. This is like a, a detailed extraction, HDR tinted image. Or you can even make it go to overlay. Overlay will give you even more details. So what you could do is possibly bring down the fill and the opacity. Like so. Right? So what I would do, I would highly recommend working with soft light. Keep it naturally. 100-100 okay so this is the detailed extraction now optionally what you could do is create an optical flare render it here in case you want to add a lens flare what you could do is uh, create a new layer control shift alt create a new stamp and then go to filter other okay go to render lens flare choose a particular point where the lens flare has to be coming is to be coming okay so I'm gonna keep it there right there towards the light but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have an accessibility to alter the position of the lens flare 
Now in this case, we can't really do anything to the lens flare because it's totally integrated with the image. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just click undo. I'm going to create a new layer. And inside this new layer, I'm going to fill it with completely black. Use black. And then go once again, just click lens flare. So it will repeat the position. And now change the blending mode to screen. Now the biggest benefit with doing this is we can really alter the position of the lens flare like this. You want to rotate, you can transform, do whatever whatever you want with the lens flare, keep it there, here, do you know, anywhere you keep, but right now I just would want to keep it there. This was just a method to alter the position of the lens flare. So this seems pretty okay, pretty good, right? Okay, so that is all folks. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And and also comment on what kind of tutorials you want for the upcoming videos. Thank you.